Hi everyone, this session will be discussing the design of intersections of roads. We are looking at a project that we've done the parcel design for a new development for subdivision. We're looking at two main roads within that subdivision as an example. Road 1 or alignment 1 coming all the way from north traveling south and alignment 2 intersecting with alignment 1 at this location here and traveling all the way south. So we've got two intersections we're looking at as an example, one at this location here, the other one at that location there. And we're trying to design the intersection between these two roads. So just to zoom in, first of all, let's make a space around the area we're designing for the intersection. I'll slide back the corridor of alignment two. Enough distance away from the intersection, we can slide it in place after we finish. Now looking at alignment one, we need to create the right cross section around this area here where the intersection, the current cross section we have, we have the two lanes, we have two sidewalks and the daylight on the edges. Simply our alignment traveling from north down to south, that means I'm driving along this intersection and I need to turn left to alignment two. If you look at it, our alignment direction from this side going south and we need to turn left to alignment 2. That means we have to create a new cross section without the sidewalk curb and the daylight on that left hand side to allow to the left turn to alignment 2 because we can't allow the intersection to go above the sidewalk and the curb simply. So to do that we will we'll copy the current cross section I'll make a new copy of that. I'll delete the curb, sidewalk, and daylight on the left-hand side. Press delete. So this is our new cross-section for the left-hand turn. We'll call it left-hand turn junction rather than assembly one a general. So I'll call this one left-hand side junction. To complete this intersection, we will need a curb return cross section. We discussed during the class what is a curb return. It's the cross section will go around this area here, this curve where the two intersection uh, where the two alignments meet. To create the curb return, I'll copy another cross section. We'll create a curb return right hand side and left hand side. We'll see which one we'll need down the track. So I'll copy another one. The curb return cross section will look something like that. We'll delete the lane from this side and the daylight and curb and sidewalk from the other side. We'll call this one as a, a left hand uh, curb return. So I'll just call it KR for curb return dash left hand side. Enter. We'll create the opposite cross section for the right hand curb return when we need it. I'll select this one here. We'll delete this time the lane on the right hand side and the curb sidewalk and daylight on the left hand side. We'll call this one curb return right hand side. We will need another one for the other intersection which has a right hand side junction We'll create that one too. We'll keep them for later use. All what we need to do, just delete the right hand side curb and sidewalk and their lights. Call this one, simply one right hand side junction. So these are all the cross sections that we may need for our design. We'll keep them here on the side and we'll use them as it comes. So to start here at this region, first of all let's change some settings on the software. We will discuss that settings down the track. This settings mainly designed to adjust the side road profile for the intersection. We won't need Civil 3D to do that for us. We will do it ourselves after we finish the intersection design. So if I go to settings, I'll go to the intersection 
and one of the commands there, create, uh, create intersection commands, edit these commands, I'll go to the secondary road profile rules, I'll turn this one off by saying no, don't apply these rules. We will adjust our secondary road profile ourselves. Okay, now to apply that new cross section that we just designed for the left hand turn, we need to create a new region within this corridor. To create a region, just select the corridor and let's split this corridor to a few regions. So I will say to split this corridor at this location. So I click twice there and now I'll create a new one around this area here. So I have to split this region, clicking within the region and it will ask me where do you want the split line. I'll just go along that section there. So for this to be done right, when I select the corridor, you have to have two markers only. If you have more than two markers, you can just remerge your regions or undo it so you can get just two markers around the intersection. We don't need more than three regions. Simply what we created now, one, two, three regions on our uh, corridor. So for this central region, that's what we agreed on. We will need to change the cross section there to be without the sidewalk, curb, and daylight on the left-hand side. So I will go to Modify Region, Region Property. It will ask me which region do you want. It will ask for this region to be changed, and I'll change the cross section for that region to be the left-hand side junction, what we designed. Go OK. As you can see, this region here now doesn't have the sidewalk, the curb, and the daylight on the left-hand side to allow for the intersection to happen between the two alignments. Now we're ready to apply the intersection command from the Civil 3D software. Having said that, we'll ask the software to design the intersection feature lines, what we call them. These lines, as you will see them in a minute, they represent profiles and alignments along the intersections components, what we'll create in a second. And we will let the software design those for us. Having said that, we're not going to ask the software to design the corridor for these baselines or alignment. We will design our own corridors or we will build our own corridors using the cross sections that we just made. So we'll go to the intersection, create intersection will ask for at what point we need to create the intersection. As you can see, because I've got the snap settings on, that will slow down if I move around the area here. So what, what's better to do, turn it off, click on it, so it's not highlighted in, in blue, and zoom in to the location you need to insert your intersection. Shift, right click, we'll choose end points, and we'll choose, that's the point there for our intersection. This will open the menu for designing intersection. Let's call this one intersection one. And there's nothing here to change other than just the name. We'll go next. Double check always what alignments and what profiles are specified for your intersection. We need the primary or the main road to be alignment one and alignment two will intersect to that. That means the, the profiles for these two alignments, make sure they are the proposed profiles, not the existing ground profiles. The proposed profiles is the road design profile. Here are the settings for the intersection that we're creating that will set all the distances, radiuses for the geometry of the intersection. We start with the first one, offset parameters. As you can see here, it tells you what each option here referring to. It's asking what's the offset of the lanes on alignment one on the primary road all the lanes we chose for our design for the cross sections were 3.6 so i'll change all these numbers to 3.6 and the same for the other side now i'll go to alignment two the same thing both of them were 3.6 meter wide lanes that's all what we need to change here. I'll choose OK. And now for the curb return parameters, we need to specify the radius of the curb return. Before I do anything here, it's very important to notice 
the direction of your curb return. So if you look at the intersection that we're representing, I'll just zoom out just to show you a better view of the intersection. This is the intersection that we're creating. This is the curb return that we are creating currently and showing you the direction of that curb return. The curb return is going this way and that way. So that means this curve is directed this way here. Very important to know that because knowing that will tell us what assembly we will use for that area. That means the assembly we will need to use or the cross section we need to use for that area contains a lane on this side, one of the lanes on this side here, and curb, sidewalk, and daylight on that side. So if I look at my assemblies here, this assembly would be the right assembly to be used. Lane on the left hand side, curb, sidewalk, and daylight on the right hand side. Let's look at it again. So the lane on the left hand side, based on the direction, I'll use the lane on the left hand side, the curb, sidewalk, and daylight on the right hand side. So if you notice we've got we've got two curb returns, one this way and the other one will come up that way. If you look at the direction we've got here, it's referring to this side here as the northeast side. So the top right hand side is the northeast side. You can see here a uh, northeast quadrant. So we'll choose that and we'll choose the curve return for 12 meters for our design. I'll choose the other side to be 12 meters too. And press OK. Before I exit that, I'll go back to that menu. It's important to notice the other side too, direction. So the other side direction going this way, based on these arrows, it's going that way. That means our cross section we will be using for the top one will be perfect for the south east side because that will create lane to the inside, curb, sidewalk, and daylight to the outside. So I'll go back, press OK. Now for the lane slope parameters. Our parameters, our slope we chose on our lanes, negative three. So we'll maintain that around the intersection. The curb return profile I'll keep that as is, I'm not going to change anything on that settings, so I'll move to next. Here is the menu giving you the option to create the corridors around the intersection. As we agreed, we will not allow the software to create the corridors for us. We will construct or build our corridor ourselves, so I'll untick this option that will gray out all this area here, and I'll go just to create intersection. As you can see, all what we created all these feature lines referring to the intersection that we need around the area that shows the curb return line on both sides and showing the lanes extension in between these curb return lines so if we go back to our cross sections here i need to check just before i forget the slope on our uh, lanes i'll select one of the lanes and right click select similar sub assemblies that will select all the lanes within the assemblies that we have I need to check just uh, that's why I was suspecting that our slope when I did the uh, cross section I didn't look at the uh, slope of these lanes so I'll change all of those to three that will update our corridors here which is fine or we can apply the update later on so I'll press escape a couple of times. Now we have the geometry of our intersection. What we have to do, I've, I just deleted that label for the intersection. It's just in the way for what we're working on. So um, um, I just deleted that, we don't need it. So now what we've got, we've got the intersection geometry. We've got the current corridor for alignment one. What we need to do, we need to create new corridors uh, along these lines that to be added to this existing corridor, corridor one. So to do so, let me just hide the uh, surface on our way. So I'll go back to Prospector, 
surfaces existing surface right click on it surface property and no display so to create new corridors along these new feature lines that we created on the uh, intersection all what we have to do we have to add new cross sections to these feature lines combining these feature lines with the cross section that will create a new corridor around that area so to do that we'll select the corridor and that will allow us to add baseline simply the baseline the current baseline for this corridor is alignment one I will add a few baselines to that corridor based on the new feature lines that we created during the intersection command so I'll go to add baseline to that corridor will ask me what baseline do you need to add for that corridor I'll choose the new baselines that we just created the north east quadrant and south east quadrant I'll start with the first one first okay that's been added as an alignment and now the software is searching for a profile for that alignment and there's only one profile for that and will give me the option to choose that I'll choose OK I'll repeat to add the second alignment or feature line which is the southeast quadrant I'll press OK and the software will look for the profile for that we'll give me the option to choose that I'll go OK simply what we did now we added new baselines for our current corridor the only one problem with that that's why we can't see these corridors here because these corridors they don't have a cross section yet as we agreed the suitable cross section for that area will be the curb return cross section the right hand side for the next video that's what we'll be adding we start adding the cross sections to that corridor we just created and we start modifying these cross sections to align with the current cross sections